Well everyone, it looks like the BlackBerry Q1 is an interesting phone that we're definitely going to take a look at today. Now, I will say BlackBerry has kind of gotten a little bit more popular throughout the last couple of years, especially right now because there was that BlackBerry movie that randomly came out. I watched it, I thought it was very cool. They didn't mention anything about the newest Blackberries, like these ones or the newer type of Blackberries, just kind of like the older ones, but still, I will tell you with the BlackBerry Key 1, still a very interesting phone. I think it was an interesting concept, and although I would not recommend anyone to buy this phone anymore, I still think there probably is some people out there who like, you know, are probably going to use this phone. So let's go and take a look at it. If you want to pick up some phones that I would recommend buying this year though, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the BlackBerry Key 1, you did have a display on this thing and it was a 4.5 inch display. Now, the thing I liked a lot about this particular phone was that it wasn't trying to be something super crazy. Like you were still getting Android on this phone. You were still getting a big, dis like a decent sized display on this thing, but you were also getting a keyboard as well. Now, I think BlackBerry, I think they just did a really, really weird thing where they just kept having the keyboard on their phones. I think they try to make it a thing or they try to make it the unique aspect of this particular device. And I felt like, you know, BlackBerry should have went ahead and moved on from this as soon as possible. They didn't do that. And that was kind of a sad thing here. But I really do feel like, you know, BlackBerry should have went through and changed out and made their full size keyboard. I think the BlackBerry Priv was a very interesting phone. And if BlackBerry did something like that, I think that would have been a lot better. But they didn't do something like that, and that was the problem. I think with the BlackBerry Q1, this phone already looks so outdated and so archaic, even though it really isn't a super outdated phone. I mean, this thing came out the same year as the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the iPhone X, and you can just see how like outdated this thing looks and feels compared to those devices. So although this thing was trying to have its unique spin on like a couple of different things, it still doesn't take away from the fact that this is a very outdated phone and a lot of people probably don't like this design. Now you were also getting, this is the other thing, you were also getting those like nav bar buttons that were just like present all the time at the bottom of this particular device. That in and of itself could be like another like turn off for a lot of people. And I would say like for a lot of people out there, if you're wanting to go ahead and use some sort of device, not only are you now using like, you know, this particular device's, you know, the, the keyboard buttons, but now you also have these like buttons on the display too that are just always present. So it's just like you're having those buttons, you're having these buttons. It's like another big thing that a lot of people probably didn't like either. And, you know, personally for me, I think that was another kind of weird thing going on for this particular device when it came down to that as well. Now, on top of that, you know, from every other aspect of this device, I think it's still okay. The keyboard of this thing too was another thing. I mean, you can imagine when you're getting a device like this, the keyboard with, you know, it did have that fingerprint sensor that was just kind of nice, but the keyboard itself, again, when you get bigger and bigger, like your fingers, they just aren't, you know, used to these types of keyboards anymore. And once you go digitally, I mean, it's very hard to go back into these like physical keyboards. And this thing, again, maybe some people still love it. Personally, for me, I've kind of moved on. And I think a lot of other people have probably moved on from this type of keyboard as well. So that kind of covers it up there as well. Around the sides of this phone, it still feels like a fairly premium device. It really doesn't feel that you know, cheap or, or terrible. And I think that's a good thing going on for this particular phone too. I think if you're getting these types of phones, I think they hold up very well. And I do think in a lot of different ways, it's a, still a very, very good device from a build quality standpoint, you know, it's okay. On, you're still getting a headphone jack on this phone too and a charging port. On the back side, you are actually getting a micro SD card slot that's associated with this type of device, which I think is actually pretty cool. I think having a micro SD card slot, as you probably would have guessed it, is a very cool thing, and it definitely is probably one of the biggest assets going on for this particular device. So I think at the end of the day, the BlackBerry Q1 was an interesting approach from, from BlackBerry. I think, again, they just kind of kept doing the keyboard thing over and over and over again. And I do feel like at a certain point, you kind of have to move on from that. I do think at this point though, I mean, we've kind of gotten used to it. I think it's totally okay. But at that point, I do feel like BlackBerry should have probably moved on from it, you know, all things considered. So that kind of covers it up there. Now, in terms of the actual camera of this thing, you have to remember the BlackBerry Key 1, with it having a single camera set up on the backside, it was a 12 megapixel camera. And on the front, it had an 8 megapixel sensor. This was pretty much a pretty basic camera when it came down to it. It definitely didn't have any like crazy cool features that you would expect from a different type of device. You were getting 4K at 30 on the back and 1080p at 30 on the front. And you probably would have guessed it, it is a pretty basic camera when it comes down to it. These types of lenses, I mean, I'll tell you from all the 2017 phones, this thing really wasn't that great. And that kind of is the problem that you're getting when you're getting these types of devices. You have to think back. This phone came out the same year as the iPhone X and the Samsung Galaxy S8. And I think the Note 8 as well 
all of those phones that I just listed had significantly better cameras than this thing, including the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 had a better camera than this thing too. That is kind of a weird thing if those types of phones, like if you have the worst camera out of all the phones in the market, and that is kind of what was going on with this particular device. So once again, as I mentioned before, I would kind of hate to recommend a phone to people, even at, in 2017, if it's like the worst camera of any phone at the time. So once again, take it as you will, but that is kind of the issue that you're getting when you're getting these types of devices. You're just kind of getting a phone that really isn't going to be giving you that great of experience. And once again, that is going to be kind of the problem when you're getting these types of devices. So at the end of the day, once again, that's another pretty big thing to keep in mind there as well. Now, on top of that, with this software, this is, I guess, a good and a bad thing. So on one hand, this was a good thing going on for this phone because it kind of was like stock Android for the most part. It didn't have like this crazy big massive skin over it. It was a bad thing though because it's it was pretty much outdated, you know, kind of when it came out. It got, I think, like one or two versions of software and like that was it. So once again, you weren't really getting any like crazy cool features associated with this phone either. It was a pretty basic camera. And I do think once again, if you're going through and getting some sort of device, I mean, it's going to be a pretty basic camera when it comes down to it. I mean, it's going to be a pretty basic software when it comes down to it. It still has, you know, stock Android, like I mentioned. But once again, if you're going through and getting some sort of software on a phone, you probably want it to have some sort of updates and everything like that going forward. This phone is not going to be giving you anything like that at all. So once again, I would hate, you know, I would hate for you to go and get some sort of software on your device and it's probably not going to be supported anymore. And with this device, that's exactly what's going on here. On top of that, with this particular phone, you are also getting you know, kind of an outdated chipset nowadays too. You're getting that Qualcomm Snapdragon 625 chipset inside with three or four gigabytes of RAM. Dude, even if you got the four gigabyte of RAM option, that one really isn't even that great either. These are kind of the issues I would say that you're getting when you're getting these types of phones because you're kind of seeing that these types of devices are just giving you kind of almost like a lack lackluster performance and lackluster software. It's very weird because when you're getting these types of devices, you would never think that these types of phones would be performing like this bad or anything like that. And with these types of devices, that's kind of what's going on. You're just not really getting like great performing phone. You're not really getting that great performing software. And especially when you compare it against the other phones that came out in this year that this device came out in, I mean, it's just going to be kind of the issue that you're going to be getting. You're going to be running into that issue over and over and over again. So what I will definitely tell you is to kind of sum up this whole entire video. I do look at a phone like the iPhone, you know, 10, the Galaxy S8, the Galaxy Note 8. Those types of phones are overall better devices in almost every single way than this particular phone. And I would hate, once again, for me to recommend a phone to people if it's already going to be outdated. And that is exactly what's going on. Please do not buy the BlackBerry Key 1 in 2024. Instead, think and buy a phone like phones of like the, the Google Pixel 7, the Pixel 6, the iPhone you know, 11, the OnePlus 9, one of those types of devices. I wouldn't really recommend buying this device anymore. It really wasn't even worth buying when it first came out, and it definitely isn't worth buying anymore. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, help me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.